Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. It was a typical Wednesday in July, the heat of the midsummer day still lingering in the air as I sat down with a glass of iced tea to peruse Craigslist. I had just moved into my own place, a modest, slightly updated apartment with an unyieldingly small kitchen and a fridge that threatened to burst at the seams with anything more than a week's worth of groceries. I had been saving up for this day, scoring the internet for an affordable freezer that was small enough to fit into my pint-sized kitchen, yet spacious enough to hold my stash of frozen pizza and batch-cooked meals. Craigslist, with its cornucopia of second-hand deals, seemed the perfect place to look. After what seemed like hours of waiting through a sea of overpriced appliances and poorly photographed posts, one finally caught my attention. A compact freezer, barely used, energy efficient, and surprisingly inexpensive. The only catch? It was a two-hour drive away, nestled in a quiet, rural pocket of the county. Despite the distance, the deal seemed too good to pass up. So the following day, armed with a strong cup of coffee and a playlist of my favorite podcasts, I made the long drive. The sun was shining brightly, casting long shadows over fields of waving corn that flanked the narrow, uneven road leading to the cellar's home. The house was a quaint, aging structure, the sort you'd imagine held years of untold stories. The cellar was an elderly gentleman, his face etched with lines of time, eyes that held a glimmer of melancholy. He didn't speak much as we loaded the freezer into the back of my truck, his gaze often lingering on the horizon, lost in thoughts I couldn't decipher. Something about the interaction felt odd, but I brushed it off, attributing it to the fatigue of the long drive. Back in my apartment, I managed to wrestle the freezer in my kitchen. It was heavier than I'd anticipated, and by the time I found a spot for it, I was drenched in sweat. Plugging it in, I felt a surge of satisfaction, eager to start loading it up. That's when I noticed an anomaly, a tiny peculiarity that disrupted the immaculate design of the freezer. Along one side of the interior was a seam that didn't match the rest of the design. It was concealed so carefully that one could easily mistake it for a manufacturing quirk if they weren't looking too closely. My heart pulsed with intrigue and an undefined nervousness. Gently, my fingers traced the unexpected line, feeling the cool plastic give way to an unevenness that confirmed my suspicions. This was indeed a hidden compartment. As my curiosity overcame the nagging caution in the back of my mind, I tugged at it. It opened with surprising ease and a gust of icy air hit my face. What greeted me inside was a sight that was as startling as it was macabre. Nestled in the compartment was a lump of meat, partially wrapped in butcher's paper that had seen better days. The sight was off-putting but not entirely alarming until the smell reached me. It was a nauseating mix of rot and frostbite, an unnatural decay that defied the preserving qualities of the freezer. My eyes watered from the stench and my throat constricted in reflex, my body instinctively resisting the urge to vomit. I stumbled back a few steps, willing my rolling stomach to settle. As the initial wave of revulsion passed, my gaze fell back on the compartment, a horrific curiosity forcing me to examine it again. My mind stuttered to a halt as I recognized the shape of the meat. It wasn't just a random piece of pork or beef. It bore a disturbing resemblance to a human hand. The gnarled contours, the twisted semblance of what might be fingers, and a sickening pallid hue that screamed of a detached humanity. I stumbled backward, the gravity of the discovery hitting me like a punch. My mind raced, trying to piece together a rational explanation, but all I could see was the ghastly sight of the frozen, human-like hand. In the thick cloud of my mounting horror, I managed to dial 911. My voice, usually steady and composed, trembled as I relayed the gruesome discovery to the operator. The operator thought it must have been a prank at first, but the sound and tone of my voice made her realize it wasn't. Her calm voice in stark contrast to my quivering one, she assured me officers were on their way. I clung onto that assurance like a lifeline, somehow making it through the next few agonizing minutes. As I waited, my gaze remained locked on the freezer, the innocent appliance now a symbol of unimaginable horror. Soon, the sound of sirens in the distance served as a grim serenade, grounding me back to reality. I watched as the officers arrived, 
their grave expressions reflecting the gravity of the situation. They cordoned off the area, treating my once cozy apartment as a crime scene. While one team worked to secure my apartment, another was dispatched to the seller's address. The eerie feeling that had lingered when I met the old man intensified into a bone-deep dread as I considered his potential involvement in this horrific scenario. After what felt like hours, a call came through to the officers at my place. The elderly man was nowhere to be found. His house, the quaint old building nestled amongst the fields, was eerily deserted. It was as if he had vanished into thin air, leaving behind only the chilling memory of our interaction and a freezer housing a dark secret. A couple of years back, life found me surfing Craigslist late into the night, my eyes scanning endless job postings. I was in a rough patch between jobs and desperately seeking something, anything, to get back on my feet. After what felt like hours, a particular post caught my eye, an office assistant job at a small marketing agency. The post was vague, the company name unfamiliar, but the promised pay was more than generous. My gut twisted with suspicion, but desperation pushed me to reach out. Days turned into a week, and just when I had given up hope, an email pinged into my inbox. It was from the agency, inviting me for an interview. Relief washed over me like a welcome tide, hope reignited in my chest. The day of the interview was unusually gloomy, the clouds hanging heavy in the autumn sky. The agency was situated in an offbeat part of town, the building standing stark amidst a seed of dilapidated warehouses. The neighborhood had an eerie quiet, the sort that made the hairs at the back of my neck stand. I brushed off the disquiet, reminding myself of the much-needed paycheck. The inside of the building was as nondescript as the outside, bare walls and sparse furnishing doing little to inspire confidence. However, the employees seemed busy, their eyes glued to the screens, their fingers flying over the keyboards. It was a scene typical of any bustling workspace, but there was an undercurrent of tension, an unspoken anxiety that lingered in the air. In the following weeks, I found myself immersed in the job. It was mundane administrative work, but the long hours and the strangely secretive nature of the projects kept me on my toes. My tasks were isolated, seemingly disjointed from the core work of the agency. I rarely interacted with the others, and any attempt to understand the bigger picture was met with vague answers and dismissive smiles. As the weeks went on, my curiosity evolved into suspicion. An underlying pattern began to emerge in the shadows of the everyday work, hinting at a reality that was far from the ordinary office job I had initially thought this to be. Frequently, I would notice men and women dressed inconspicuously, visiting our office late at night. Their visits were brief and hushed, always shrouded in a thick air of urgency. They didn't fit the usual mold of marketing clients. There was an edge about them, a predatory alertness that was hard to miss. Equally alarming were the transactions I was asked to handle. The documents were meticulously coded, names and figures camouflaged in a labyrinth of symbols and numbers. What struck me as odd was the volume of cash involved. It was far more than any marketing agency would handle, and the way it was treated, transported in nondescript briefcases, exchanged under the vague pretext of client transactions, set off alarm bells in my mind. But the true revelation came on a day steeped in a troubled silence. There was a buzz of tension in the air, as though everyone was collectively holding their breath, bracing for an impending storm. I watched as my colleagues, typically engrossed in their work, Huddled together, there whispers a quiet hum in the otherwise silent room. That's when I heard it, the harsh, invasive blare of sirens tearing through the tranquil afternoon. I felt the chill crawl down my spine as I moved towards the window, my heart pounding in sync with the rhythm of the pulsing red and blue lights that washed over the building. The sight that met my eyes set my world into a tailspin. The quiet street was teeming with police, their grim faces and swift movements echoing the seriousness of the situation. A huge banner proclaiming police line. Do not cross was unfurled, the words seeming to brand themselves into my very soul. In that electrifying moment, the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle fell into place. The coded documents, the cash transactions, the secret visitors, they all added up to a terrifying reality. The marketing agency was merely a facade, a smokescreen veiling the criminal organization that lurked beneath. The realization crashed into me with the force of a tidal wave, Sweeping away any lingering doubts, I felt a cold dread seep into me, replacing the initial shock with a profound sense of horror. 
I had unwittingly become a cog in a wheel of criminal activity, my desperate pursuit for a job leading me into the heart of an underworld I hadn't known existed. We were a front for something much darker, a criminal organization that had expertly masqueraded as a corporate entity. As reality crashed down, my mind was a whirlwind of fear and shock. The innocuous job post on Craigslist, my desperate need for a job, had landed me in the middle of a nightmare. In the ensuing chaos I was questioned, my home turned into a temporary detention center. The weeks blurred into a never-ending loop of interrogations and sleepless nights. The agency was revealed to be involved in a myriad of illicit activities, from money laundering to illegal trading. Today, I'm free from the shackles of that life. I found a new job, one that involves mundane paperwork and uneventful office days. But the memory of that Craigslist job post still sends a chill down my spine, a chilling reminder of how desperation can lead us down a dark, dangerous path. Now, whenever I pass by a dilapidated building or see a too-good-to-be-true job post, I can't help but recall the eerie silence of the office, the flashing police lights, and the terrifying reality of being part of a criminal organization. A while back, I was going through a pretty rough patch financially. You know the drill? Bills piling up, paycheck nowhere near enough to cover everything. Out of desperation, I started looking around my apartment, trying to find something I could sell to tide me over until my next payday. After digging through cupboards and drawers, I laid eyes on my old phone. It was in decent shape, a little out of date, but it worked just fine. So I snapped a couple of photos, scribbled down some basic details, and tossed it up on Craigslist. To my relief, it didn't take long before I got a hit. A guy, let's call him John, was interested. I immediately suggested that we use Cash App for the transaction, wanting to keep everything clean and straightforward. But John insisted on paying with cash. I wasn't too keen on the idea, but my need for the money overrode my reservations. So, on the day of the swap, it was sunny and bright. Perfect weather, he asked me. I took the old phone, got on the bus, and headed to the public park we agree on. It was crowded, filled with families having picnics, kids playing, dogs chasing after frisbees. Despite this, I was a nervous wreck, feeling like a fish out of water. I spotted John after a bit. He was just an average Joe wearing normal jeans and a t-shirt, nothing out of the ordinary about him. We shook hands and did the usual chit-chat thing, you know, small talk about how sunny it was and how cool the phone was. Watching John check out the phone was nerve-wracking. He was flipping it over, pressing buttons, all while wearing this poker face that gave nothing away. I was on edge, wondering if he'd find something wrong with it. Then came the moment of truth. He whipped out a wad of cash, flipping through it like it was nothing. I was so relieved to see the money that I didn't even think twice about it. We swapped the phone for the cash, shook hands again, and just like that, he disappeared back into the crowd. Flush with my temporary windfall, I went to my bank the next day to deposit the cash. I'll never forget the look on the teller's face as she examined the bills. It was a mix of confusion and concern. A pit started forming in my stomach. She excused herself, disappearing into the back room, only to return with the branch manager. The next few words out of his mouth hit me like a ton of bricks. The money, he explained in an apologetic tone, was counterfeit. I stood there, stunned, the weight of what he just said slowly sinking in. I'd been duped. The lifeline I thought I'd found had been nothing but a cruel illusion. The urgency of my financial situation had blinded me to the possibility of such a scam. The subsequent days were a blur of police reports, phone calls with Craigslist support, and sleepless nights spent replaying the entire incident over and over again in my head. Despite my best efforts, John had disappeared into the other, leaving no trace behind except a stack of worthless paper. That event left a deep impact on me. Not just the immediate blow to my finances, but a lasting impression of the caution needed when conducting such transactions. It's a memory that resurfaces every time I think of selling something online. It acts as a constant reminder of the risk that comes along with the convenience of such platforms. Despite the passage of time, the bitterness of that experience still lingers. It was a wake-up call, a lesson learned the hard way. The world of online buying and selling is not as straightforward as it seems. It's a jumble out there filled with ordinary folks just trying to get by and those who lurk in the shadows waiting to take advantage of the unsuspecting. Now, whenever I pull out my phone, it's hard not to think about its predecessor, 
the foam that became the unwitting player in a scammer's game. It's a harsh reminder of my gullibility, my desperation, and the stark reality of the world we live in where even a simple act of selling an old phone can turn into a nightmarish ordeal. As I continue to navigate through life, I carry this memory with me, a painful scar that has shaped my approach towards online transactions. It has taught me to be more skeptical, more cautious. In this digital age where convenience is often king, it's important to remember that not all that glitters is gold, and not every cash deal on Craigslist is as it seems. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories and want to hear more, then please subscribe and like and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.